Today is also the first day of the month. So I decided to do something that I haven't done in a long time. I haven't done this particular thing in a very, very, very long. It's been three years since I've done Sober October. Usually I do it out before the three year absence. I was doing it every year. And I think I also did on top of that dry January. So the so dry January, I think is more so of just abstaining from your vices. But I feel like Sober October, on top of abstaining from your vices, it's also a chance to do more of the things that you think you should be doing all year round. Picking up new hobbies, being becoming more productive, blah, 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 blah. We all know where Sober October kind of being, was popularized from or where it kind of came into the zeitgeist or where I kind of saw it from, mostly from Joe Rogan. And the funny thing about Sober October from Joe Rogan, it came about more so as a way of Tom Segura and those type of dudes and Ari Shafir as a way to do like a soft intervention on Burt Kreischer. So they saw their friend becoming, you know, he is a full-blown alcoholic and maybe going a little bit off the rails. So they created this sort of like Sober October challenge where they basically abstain from booze, abstain from drugs, all those kind of vices that they do and then committed themselves to working out and whatever it may be. But it was mostly because they wanted Burt to get fit and healthy. Over the years, unfortunately, um, it's kind of fell by the wayside COVID I think also Bert has kind of realized that a lot of those guys uh, <laughs> they were kind of using it more to kind of get him healthy and less so about themselves they don't think they have any issues they think he's the one that has most of the issues so I think he kind of probably took that um, I, I maybe say a, a bit of an offense I also think people online probably didn't make it fun for him because a lot of people were making him accountable people in the comments saying hey make sure you're not drinking make sure you're not doing this like and he doesn't really like that sort of shit so i'm sure that didn't make it too fun and in general it's a lot of work right it's a lot of fucking work like it's 31 days of really going balls to the wall pedal to the metal crazy hard in terms of picking up the things that you don't do not not the the, the abstaining thing i think is easy honestly i think anyone on this chat, anyone here watching this live stream, anyone here, re, you know, listen to this after the fact, you can, if you want to put your mind to it very easily, do 31 days where you abstain from things that you know you shouldn't be, you know, maybe indulging in, whether it's chocolate, sweets, you know, too many vapes, whatever it may be, cigarette smoking, you can abstain from that 31 days, it's quite easy, I think so, we, we have the possibility to do so, especially if you have no money, if you have a month where you have no money and you can't buy cigarettes, suddenly it becomes really easy to quit cigarettes. But I think the harder thing is committing to like the 31 days of, let's say, reading a book. Let's say of like writing a chapter of the book you want to write. Let's say taking pictures, whatever you like to do, taking pictures, building something in your home, da -da -da, whatever the thing that you want to do. So that's that I think is going to be the harder thing going forward. But this year, I decided to do Sober October. Um, as more so as a as a as a chance to kind of reset the year because I feel like I have in every month I have like two or three weeks where I'm pretty strict with what I do. Then I have a week where I go fucking crazy and off the off the rails, and then it kind of rinse and repeats every single month, um, which is better than most people I would imagine. But still, I have a high standards for my life and for my person. So because of those high standards I have, and looking back, I was doing a bit of a cleanse of my Flickr, doing a cleanse of my Google Drive and all these subtle things and going through the things I was doing. I was like, rotted. Even though I wasn't maybe as consistent as I am now with the content I'm doing and the streams and the podcasting and whatever else, I think I was doing way more prior, like, you know, let's say prior to like fucking 2019 than I am now, like extracurricularly. I was going fucking hard, but back then I didn't think I was. That's the funny thing. I thought I was doing, I wasn't doing enough back then, but I was actually doing way more than I'm doing now. So I think over the years, in a way, even though I'm still productive and I probably still do more than most, I think I've kind of taken my foot off the pedal and I've become a little bit lazy and I've kind of indulged myself a little bit too much in things I probably wouldn't have indulged myself in, you know, maybe prior to 2019. So... I feel like this particular Sober October will be a chance for me to reset and to kind of get back on my shit, basically. Even though I'm not too far off where I want to be, I still think there's a way more I could be doing um, and kind of really pushing myself. And the whole point of this particular Sober October is to kind of push myself to the point of breaking, basically, to see how much I can really do if I really cut out all distractions and really go fucking hard. So that's what I'm currently trying to do. So my particular list, I've got it here written on my um, Twitter. You can check it out on my Twitter. Go on it, x.com forward slash my full name. You know what it is, um, x.com forward slash my full name. And my Sober October, abstaining from the following things for the whole month. No alcohol. Pretty easy for me. 
because I don't really keep booze in the house. Most of the time I have to go and buy booze or I go to a club or I go to a bar. So as long as I don't have booze in the house, I'm fine. And I don't really like drink. Uh, I don't really drink booze as like a for dinner or stuff. You know what I mean? I, I usually just have water or I have like a juice or something. I'll make like a juice or whatever or some tea. So that's perfectly easy. I'm not really too worried about that. No drugs. That might be an issue. <laughs> the no multivitamins. That might be an issue. But again, I feel like once I take away the booze, the drugs kind of go away as well. Because again, you have to kind of go out to the drugs. Even if I'm indoors, you kind of want drugs. You kind of want booze anyway. I'm not one of these people. Like I have, I have done it maybe in the past with multivitamins, where like you kind of, you kind of just do that and don't do any booze. But I feel like that's some serial killer shit. I'm not sure about you guys. I feel like the people who can do multivitamins who can take their v the, you know the vitamin d's and shit without boot without booze i feel like you people are you know there's you people are serial killers <laughs> you know you people are on another planet i can't do that i need to have a little bit of a tickle you know what i mean i need to have a little bit of a a little bit of a you know a little bit of a fucking liquor under my tongue a little bit of beverage you know? a little bit of a cerveza under my tongue and so that's going to be on, out of the way the next one no coffee no coffee again i think should be fairly easy um i think in the last i say four months i've been waning off it anyway i think if four months ago i was probably having minimum i think i think four months ago if i'm honest i was probably having like more than three cups of coffee a day that's not including my cold brews which is a lot i was having more than three cups i'd say probably five minimum a day and I think over the last four months, I don't know why I've been, because just, I, I don't think I was, I was trying. I just think the taste of coffee kind of is a bit naff to me now. I've been not drinking as much. So maybe I'll, I'll drink two cups of coffee every other day, which is a big drop from drinking five every day. So no coffee, again, should be a difficult thing because, again, I love my coffee, even though I'm not drinking as much as a bit before. So I'm just going to replace that with tea. It's, you know, There's still some caffeine in it, but not obviously as much as coffee. And coffee, again, is the major thing that I feel like I need to abstain more from. The next one is no carbs. Again, that's going to be very difficult because if you know me, you know how much I love, I love, I love my pain. You know how much I love my pain. You know how much I love my bread. You know how much I love my baguettes and all that kind of shit. So that's going to be very difficult. I'm a fucking sucker for toast, right? I love a bit of toast. I love a bit of white bread, just toasted with some butter, crack, 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 and nothing else bang in the mouth. I'm maybe like a Nutella guy or a jam guy. Just give me a fucking nice tub of butter give me a big loaf of bread a toaster that has a dial where i can maybe put it to like two or like two and a half toast that so it's like lightly toasted and then oh i'll go fucking crazy so that's gonna be hard no processed sugar should be very difficult too because processed sugar for me includes all of my confectionaries that includes all my kinder buenos that includes all my weight, all my wafer biscuits, all my chocolate bars, all my croissants, all my pan chocolates, all my all my croissants filled with almonds, whatever else, donuts, all that shit is gone because of processed sugar. So that's gonna be very difficult to, very very difficult to be able to go to be my food shopping and just be buying my food and not be going down the aisles where there's stuff in like packets and stuff. It's going to be very difficult, but I'm looking forward to seeing how I feel at the end of the month by not having the coffee, carbs, and processed sugars. Because, you know, we all know what no booze and no drugs does to you. That's fine. But I'm more than curious to see how I'm going to be feeling when I have no coffee, no carbs, no processed sugars in my body. That's going to be so curious to see how I end up feeling. The next one is no porn. The no porn thing is not really an issue. I don't feel like I don't. It's not like I sit down and watch hours of porn per day. But you know, there's the old kind of like dibble here and there, and most of it is more so like it. it the mo, the, you know what? The, to be honest, the the main place where I see porn most is fucking Twitter. I swear to God, that fucking timeline. You just be fucking browsing, doing your thing. And then, of course, some of it has to do with what you like. And again, it's algorithms and shit. You input stuff. But sometimes you be browsing. You're just checking, doing your normal thing. And then, bang, you just see a full clam in your face. At like, what, 10, 10 a.m. in the morning. A full clam. A full fucking clam just throbbing in your face in full HD. It's too much, man. It's too much. So, for me, it's not like I don't have any, subs I don't have any subscriptions. I don't subscribe to anything. I'm not downloading any porn. 
I rarely type in the words Pornhub on my browser. You know what I mean? Most of it I'm seeing legitimately is on social media. So as long as I don't be on social media, I'll be fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not going to be difficult. But I think if I was, if I had like an OnlyFans subscription or if I was on Pornhub every day, that'd be more, more difficult. But I felt like including it anyway because it's important just to kind of like, you know, I want to just to kind of cleanse your mind of that sort of like stimuli in the first place. We'll be interested to see what happens there. And then the last thing I'm abstaining from for this month will be no social media before 12 p.m. That means no social media post, no social media browsing, none at all before 12 p.m., which is, again, something I used to do in the past pretty easily. No, no, you know, no fucking, um, no kind of skin off my nose. But over the years, again, I got into bad habits and kind of took my foot off the pedal. So that's what I'm planning to do um, this particular month. So I'm, I'm abstaining from... The things that I'm saying from, just to give you a quick run, a quick rundown, no alcohol, no drugs, no coffee, no carbs, no processed sugar, no porn, no social media before 12 p.m. That's my sober October abstaining list. Then going on from that, hobbies and things I'll be doing during the month. So you cut all those things, but then here are the things I'm going to be doing during the month to kind of keep myself occupied and keep my mind away from all that stuff that I don't want to do. So, I'll be reading books two hours per day. I'll be running such walking a minimum of three, hour, three miles per day. I'm going to do one today after I work out. Working out in the gym for a minimum of 30 minutes per day. One hour of language learning, French and Spanish per day. Write and publish a blog post, one, po one blog post per day. And write and publish a substack, one post per day. So, I, I'm, most of you don't even know I have a substack, but I do have a substack that I'll be putting out later on. And obviously, I'll be going back to the blog, which is defaultgoon.com or defaultgoon.net. I don't know, I forgot what the fucking URL is, but regardless of which it is, you'll be seeing it very, very soon on my socials anyway when I share it on there. So that's the things I'm doing. Read two hours per day. Run and walk minimum of three miles per day. Work out in a gym for a minimum of 30 minutes per day, which for this one includes strength and conditioning. It includes mobility. Everything includes in that 30 minutes. Um, one hour of language learning per day. And to be honest, this also, the reason why I put this this way, because I'm doing a run, walk minimum of three miles per day, plus I'm doing a working out. I kind of want to do for this, not kind of, I'm I'm going to do for a particular month, just do some form of exercise every day for the 31 days. So on each day, there'll be something, whether it's me running or walking, whether I spend time in the gym, but I want to try and do like, you know, an unbroken fucking 31 days all the way through and see what I'll go on. So it should be fucking fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I think there's like, I, I, I would have put, um, I would have actually put one no clubbing on here, but I haven't really been clubbing that often anyway, so I don't really think it's an issue. And I think I'm going to be going to the forward event in Fold. I think next week, I think there's a Malajunta event happening in Fold this weekend. So it'll be good to also go to these events completely Stone Cold Sober and see what that is about as well. Do you know what I mean? And of course, I'll report back on that one as well because that might be an interesting um, thing to sort of like observe from I, my POV. We're going to a nightclub surrounded by people that are fucking ketted out of their faces and I'm going to be there just sucking stoic. You know what I mean? And Stone Cold Sober like a fucking judge. So I'm really looking forward to it. Really am. I feel like, you know, most months kind of blur, blend or blur into the other month. So I feel like this should be a really good thing to do going forward for me. And of course... Um, I feel like um, I'm going to be, you know, doing a good job of maybe documenting some of my progress as well in this particular thread. So if you see it, it's pinned on my profile. Check it out. I'll be updating with all the stuff that I'll be doing throughout the particular month, maybe sharing some of my findings and shit. And yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. Really am fucking looking forward to it. Really am looking forward to it. Can't wait to see how it goes. Can't wait to see how it goes.